Hi everyone. In this video, I want to talk about an important diagnostic tool that can make a significant difference in how we understand and treat TMJ disorders, the Panorex. This advanced imaging technique is a great screening tool that can help to identify issues that have to do with the TMJ temporomandibular disorder that may not be visible with traditional x-rays. But many patients don't want to have a Panorex taken because of radiation exposure. So let me put this quickly into context. A typical Panorex is about 10 units of radiation. And comparing this to daily, everyday sources, here are some common examples. For example, daily background radiation, which is basically you walking around, is about 10 units. Chest x-ray is about 100 units. One serving of Brazil nuts is about five units. Daily radiation from food is one unit. And sleeping next to someone is 10 units. So when we consider the fact that many people sleep next to somebody, consume food, and have background exposure, all these amount to much more radiation on a daily basis than one Panorex. Now here's what a Panorex can help us see and you will be surprised by some of what can be seen on a Panorex that can greatly help us prevent, diagnose early, and manage TMJ issues before they become unmanageable and painful. Now, by the way, this is my Panorex machine. So let's take a deeper look. So first of all, here's a typical Panorex. Now, most dentists see teeth. So here you have impacted teeth, wisdom teeth, maybe a missing tooth, there's some decay, but very few look beyond that. Here's another one, broken piece of a root after an extraction that resulted from a piece of tooth being left behind. Then there's a fractured tooth that resulted from massive decay left unrestored. And here's sinus pneumatization, where the sinus drops when a tooth is extracted. That would need surgical correction of this person would like implants to chew with. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about TMJ disorder science, which is what I focus on. So let's look at a few things that are really common signs of TMD that are most often missed by dentists on Panorex. Notching. If you take a look at the angle of the mandible here, you'll see a difference as compared to here. So what is notching? Notching at the angle of the mandible refers to an indentation or a concavity that can be seen on a Panorex or sometimes palpated in the lower jaw. So if you take a look here, there's really an even flat surface at the base of the mandible. But here, there's a concavity at the angle. This is a sign of chronic clenching or grinding. And if you want to learn more about the why and the how this occurs in TMJ patients, check out other videos on my channel. So here's an example of a Panorex where you can see notching. And here's the other side of it. Here's another patient, more notching. Here it is again, different patient. So another thing that we see on Panorex is a lot when it comes to TMJ patients is remodeling. Now remodeling at the angle of the mandible refers to the process of bone reshaping or structural changes of the lower jaw, typically again as a result of chronic clenching or grinding. And more on this in my other videos, but you can see here how the angle of the mandible changes or remodels as compared to here. And this is due to the stress of the bone resulting in extra bone being deposited to protect and support the excess forces from clenching or grinding. So take a look at the remodeling in this Panorex and another one. Remodeling here, you can see parts of the bone is, are being built in excess at the angle of the mandible. And again, a big, you can already see the pattern. You can see what's going on on the left. And here we go again. It, again, bone becomes lumpy sometimes when the muscle pulls so hard in certain areas as compared to other areas. And again, this is heavy clenching over the years. We'll take a look here and here. And again, now this guy, this is how much force he's using to clench and grind. He's cracking his teeth. Take a look at all the fractal lines. Now, a lot of dentists will look at him and say, well, there's not a lot of wear, so don't worry about it. But take a look at all the cracks on his teeth. This is what clenching will do. 
And again, some of the more examples, I mean, these patients are constantly changing their jaw and the way the jaw grows in order to put up with the excess forces of the clenching. Now, condylar changes in TMJ refers to alterations of the shape, size, or structure of the mandibular condyle. And that results from degenerative joint disease, trauma, or inflammatory conditions. Again, much more detail on this in other videos, but let's take a look at some common degenerative changes that I see all the time in the TMJ patients that come into my practice. So here's where a healthy condyle should be, outlined in blue. Now here's this patient's condyle. So they've lost a lot of bone and caused some flattening to the condyle. Take a look at the other side. Same thing, there's quite a bit of flattening in the condylar head. Here's flattening on the anterior uh, condylar head surface and same thing on the left side. This one has a lot of uh, breakdown on the left side, on the left condylar head and the posterior. This patient has kind of a bilateral anterior and uh, posterior flattening of the condylar head and same thing on the left side. A lot of degeneration on that anterior condylar head on the right side a bit on the left side, both upper, posterior, and um, anterior. Now take a look at the right condyle here. A lot of degeneration, a lot of wear, a lot of bone loss on the condyle. And again, patient after patient, you're gonna see these patterns as you start looking. This one actually has excess bone growth, and these are typically, if, uh, if you continue and do a CBCT, you probably see something called lipping or osteophytes where bone is actually uh, laid in excess in certain areas due to the degenerative changes. And more on that in other videos, but you could see it even on a panorex at times. And again, the other side is quite a bit uh, broken down and changed. Again, some flattening here. Take a look at the left side before I, I outline it. A lot of degeneration and you could see the dipping in the bone. And another one here, and take a look at the pattern of bone degeneration. This is pretty aggressive. This is an interesting one. This is a lady who came in with a broken condyle. You can see the pieces of, of um, the condyle that are fractured and also a broken coronary process here. So this is from trauma. She had no idea she had broken it. She was just in constant pain for years. And over the years, look what happened to her condylar head. So she's got flattening, anterior and posterior. But look at what it's happened to the shape of the condyle. It has completely remodeled in order to try and keep up with the forces that are happening as a result. And this is a hypoplastic condyle or degenerated condyle, very small head, a lot of bone loss, a lot of degeneration in general. And again, these patients are in pain. So stylohyoid ligament calcifications. So the stylohyoid this, sorry, the styloid process is a slender projection uh, of bone extending downward from the temporal bone of the skull. And it serves as an attachment point for muscles and ligaments associated with the tongue and throat. The stylohyoid ligament is a ligament that runs from the styloid process to the hyoid bone. In individuals who clench and grind their teeth, this ligament becomes overused, leading to calcification and hardening as a protective response making it visible on x-rays such as a panorex. So here's a salivary process on this patient, both sides. You can see how much it's grown, how much it's calcified. Here it is again. And these will take on all kinds of different shapes and sizes. Here's another one. And this is a big one. And another one. You can see how the bone structures and forms along the ligament. These can get quite long. And remember, these are near vital structures. The jugular vein, carotid artery, all run in that area. And so these can be quite dangerous. Some of them, will you'll actually see two parts to them where uh, part of the ligament calcifies and then it continues on in another piece. These are like weapons. Thanks. And we'll take a look at that one. They can become massive, and these patients can sometimes feel symptoms in their neck, especially when they turn their head. Sometimes it's referred to Eagle Syndrome, and there's a lot more on that in another video, so to, uh, keep an eye out for that, and don't forget to subscribe if you want more information on this. 
but you can see how dangerous these can become. Take a look at that one on the left side, it's massive. Now, obviously in these patients, you're gonna see all the things that I'm talking about in combination. So stylohyoid, ligament calcifications, condylar head changes, degeneration to the condylar head. You're gonna see patients with all of the above. So here's flattening, degeneration on both sides, bilateral. You're gonna see um, remodeling. You're often gonna see notching in these patients. So really look out for all of these because these are all signs of TMD. Take a look at the remodeling already and the condylar head changes, notches. And here is the left side, very flattened, and the right side, of course, a lot of breakdown on these patients. So Panamex is a great screening tool for TMJ disorder. It can tell us so much before the patient gets worse. You can see early signs and prevent TMD from getting worse. So for more information on these topics, check out some of these videos on my channel and don't forget to subscribe to learn more about TMD.